Welcome to Picks with the Professor, the show where a real statistics professor gives you sports betting tips. This is college basketball, Monday, January 8th. Cousin Jared, we have a very weak day slate. We, we have games. <laughs> we have games. Yeah. Um, usually on Monday, we get the big Monday games, you know, on ESPN. Sometimes ESPN U will, will join in and there's like two big 12 games and two ACC games. Um, with the national championship game for football, that's not yeah. happening, and nope. so this is a very weak slate. But, folks, we got you covered. We got three great picks for you on the free pick show. And if you want to join us over on Dub Club, we're going to cover the entire rest of the slate, folks. I'm going to give you a pick for every single game, but one of them. I can't come up with one for one game, I just don't like mm. anything on it. I got to pick for everything else out there. Uh, if you're interested in that, join us over on Dub Club weekly recap again we don't do this every single day because a lot of times we record while games are still happening <laughs> that makes it tough to tell you how we did yesterday especially if we cover a late game uh but here on sundays it's usually easier for us to get that in and so you can see things have gone pretty well um our best bets we unveiled this here at the end of the week before just kind of ho-hum because you're going to put you on the spot. Like, what are we doing to make the best bets better? Like, what's uh, – we haven't talked about it. I'm just, so I'm just going to see what you can come up with uh, at, at living here. Do better. <laughs> Do better. Yeah. I like it. I, I'm, thinking, I'm thinking about uh, improv, right? It's always about saying yes. The issue is I didn't give you something to say yes to. So I guess that's bad on me for setting you up poorly from the improv standpoint. And Well, that's that's fine. Uh, I mean, we're always looking to, to get better. I, I think, like – probably need to i think we all have some teams that we have a pretty good handle on and some teams that we don't have a, a good handle on and probably i need to try to stay in my lane more with the teams that i feel that i have a good read on <laughs> and and maybe not a team that i just feel like oh yeah i feel feel like that's happened a time or two let's go with that i think i just need yeah. to stay in my lane more i i should have gone with more something like the way improv is supposed to go right i'm supposed to give you something ridiculous you know be like hey are we going to blindfold a monkey and throw bananas at him and see what he picks and then you would just say yes like that's how mm. improv works yeah. i guess but yeah um i didn't do that but yeah. free show picks 10 and 5 last week so if you're with us here on this show you did great the a grade totals break even last week fantastic for the season though happy with those 16.7 units there for the biggest edge on totals a grade money lines again whether sometimes we're taking dogs people are like i can't believe you're taking a dog and then sometimes we take some favorites i can't believe you'd lay odds it's like it's working people it's working why is it working because i have a phd in statistics i understand probability i don't know how many times i've said that and the a grade money lines are working uh play of the day working uh, best bets. We're gonna. We're always making tweaks. Always making tweaks behind the scenes to try to figure out how to make things better. Um, but I mean, hey, for the first week of us trying to figure this out, uh, how we can subset into an even smaller group of picks. Uh, you know what? Okay. So uh, if you are interested in seeing all those best bets, all the A grades, uh, and I know there are people out there who are playing every single A grade. Uh, and it's it's like a couple hundred bets a week. It's a lot. But if you're doing it, hey, it's <laughs> worked out great for you last week. Uh, you could sign up for a dub club. I think I think time's running out. I think you got less than 24 hours for a free two-week trial. So if you if you watch this before tip-off of the first game, you'll get two free weeks. That QR code there on the screen will take you right to the page and you'll see two-week free, free trial. The link in the show description as well. We talk about it all the time. We have great retention numbers. People stay around on our dub club longer, uh, almost, almost as long as you know anybody else on their platform. And why is that? Because we provide a lot of information. We shoot you straight. Uh, I don't know. Uh, we have fun on, on Discord. <laughs> and uh, we, we want to we give you a taste of that. Check it out. See if you like it. I think you will. Most people I, tend to. Yeah, and I, I don't know if you would ever get more value out of a two-week free trial than you will right now in college basketball season with hundreds and hundreds of games um, each week. The, that two-week free trial is going to go a long way. And you also get NFL playoffs. I don't know what we're doing next week, but uh, we're coming off yet another incredible NFL week. Um, you know, got New Orleans, got yeah. Tennessee, got Detroit, got the Giants on the money line, got Green Bay, Got Las Vegas. I mean, it was another incredible day on the NFL. So part of that free trial, you'll get the first couple rounds of the NFL stuff. So uh, no yeah. reason not to check that out and see if you like it. Otherwise, though, 
let's get to it because again on the extended cut we're going to cover every single monday game so we got a long show ahead for those of you on dub club who like to hear us talk about college basketball but first northeastern in monmouth cousin jared this uh i believe is the game of the night it's the best game oh. <laughs> sideline it's not even mm-hmm. Really close, uh, with apologies to Norfolk State and NC Central, which is a solid matchup of two. Um, yeah, cool. but, uh, this will be your, your best game of the night, projected to be moderately close. But we've got Monmouth as the slightly better team at home, and that gives them a 65% chance to win, according to the model. That makes minus 160 a B grade. So just eats into the B grade, minus 164 would be your threshold for the B grade. Minus 146 would get you to an A grade. So if that price drops any, well, okay, 15 cents, you get on the A grade. But shopping around for money line prices, especially later into the night, once multiple books have the prices up or into the next day and you more options, um, you might be able to find an A-grade price on this. The, the money line prices move around a lot, that you know, all that sort of stuff. Uh, but either way, whether you're getting it in the mid minus 140s or if you're playing it at a price like this at minus 160, like Monmouth here, it'll be an interesting matchup of strength on strength and weakness on weakness, but it's hard not to like the home team here as long as you're in a minus 180 or better, Mark. It's kind of where... You don't really want to play it past that. You never know where the numbers are going to go. Cousin Jared, uh, this one jumped off the page to you in looking at the game. It's one of the ones we just had had to have, had to talk about, had to make a recommendation as, as a best bet. Uh, why is that to you? Uh, first thing is, uh, in it is just very, very difficult to go uh, on the road in conference and win, as we saw with uh, Michigan State today uh i know that's the big 10 it's a little bit a little bit yeah. different but yeah. still just winning conference games in college on the road in college basketball is tough and then you look at what monmouth has done they, they i know west virginia is down this year but they have a victory over west virginia uh, a defensive oriented team they have victories over lehigh and belmont teams that can get up and down the court uh you know they lost the game, of course, but they they only gave up 72 points to Oklahoma. Uh, Monmouth can play some defense. And then they beat Towson on Thursday, 51 to 43. I mean, that is that is put it, put it put it in the Louvre, right? Yes, put it, put it, put it in the Louvre. Very, very nice. Um, there is really just it seems to me that Monmouth can play just about any type of game that that you want to play, and like I said, they're they're at home in a in a, in a conference game. Uh, I just think they're going to be really tough to knock off. Um, yeah, Monmouth. You know, you talk about the West Virginia uh, game, which was obviously kind of pretty pretty impressive at the start of the season, kind of put them on the radar a little bit for most people who hadn't been paying attention. But because Jared, uh, West Virginia, I, I believe they were the team that lost by about a hundred points to uh, Houston. Uh, yes. on Saturday. So well, if you're a West Virginia fan watching this, I, I mean, it, 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 you know, I, you know, kick a man while he's down, you know? I mean, it, losing by 100 to, to Houston, uh, probably not the last team that's going to do that this year. It's, Even it's in the true. big world. That's true. It's like just a random Tuesday for them, it seems like. So we're going to take yeah. Monmouth here at minus 160. Again, wouldn't really want to play it past 180. Never know where the number's going to go. If it falls a little bit, you know, a little bit better value. It's kind, of, it's kind of right now in the middle of where on the value spectrum right now, you know, a little bit better price. Great. A little bit worse price you can play, but don't go too crazy on either side. Right. Yep. That's exactly what I would say. Um, moving on to some small school basketball. Oh, no, no, I always do this. I always, I always you know, forget. Uh, we're going to stick to mind with real quick. If it, again, if I haven't convinced you already for that free trial um, over on dub club, this is what you get every single time, uh, every single game, every single day you get this information. Um, again, Check out that link in the show description. You can get all sorts of goodies, all sorts of information, all sorts of thresholds as to what the A grade uh, thresholds are. Uh, and that'll take us to Alabama AM at Mississippi Valley State. Uh, Cousin Jared, this is the worst game of the day, second worst game of the day on a really bad it, slate you, of games. You could have told me this was the second worst game of the season, and I would have said, yeah. <laughs> um, Mississippi Valley State's. Just they're dead last in everybody's power ratings, and, and it's not even close. Um, yeah. they're they're really? 0, and, 0 and 14, so have not even. I don't even know if they. I don't think they have any on their schedule, but like haven't even scheduled one of those like Division three NAIA teams or anything mm-hmm. just to get one mm-hmm. win. Uh, they they are currently over. Yeah, and and sometimes you'll see, especially a SWAC, SWAC school and 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 you know a MEAC school as well, or just some of the smaller schools in general won't do that because they need every game 
to collect money for their yep, yep. athletic budget. So they, they're constantly getting paid, you know, by the bigger schools. And so sometimes that'll happen. And, and the, the issue with Mississippi Valley State is even opponent adjusted, their offense is so inept. It's so terrible. It's not even remotely close. Um, their defense isn't that bad. Um, relatively speaking, number 342 is okay. Um, it's kind of basically rounding error, the same as Alabama A&M. You see just the difference is that Alabama A&M's offense is bad, whereas Mississippi Valley State's is terrible. Here's the thing, though. And I swear I remember saying this last year where we took Mississippi Valley State a couple times. I mean, they will cover every once in a while. Uh-huh. And, and we took them a couple times last year. It was these situations like this home game, you know, against one of the weaker teams in the conference. Can they at least keep it close? We're going to take them plus eight and a half. I got this at nine personally uh, over at Bet Online. If you don't have an account there, you can sign up with the link in the show description. They typically have some of the best prices, especially in Moneyline Sports. Um, got them at plus nine, minus 105 which is a nice little uh, little deal there. You know, I'm not saying this, this Valley State wins this game. What I am saying is they only have so many chances at a win. This might be their best. Uh-huh. And even though this is the, one of their best chances for a win, we still aren't even taking them on the money line because the probability <laughs> they win still isn't even high enough for us to do that. But taking all these points seems smart. Late fouls might get this away from us, right? When we talk about the A grade, we're not saying it's a lock. There are no such things as locks in gambling. What we're saying is that the difference is large enough such that we win this at a slightly higher clip than the B grade, slightly higher than the C, slightly higher than the D in the long run. And so this is one that we think has a little bit of value on it, taking all these points with Mississippi Valley State. The model knows they're terrible. That's baked in completely. And we're to the point, I think, with Mississippi Valley State where every time they're playing, you either have to take them or pass because – there's no value fading them at this point because everybody knows it's like so baked in already that you can't really think it's smart to continue to fade them just because the number's so skewed. It's like the Jets back in the day when they were so terrible at football. I guess that's still yeah. now actually. Um, <laughs> but, but, but you, you know, I, I, w- w- what are your thoughts on it, cousin Jared? Um, I would agree that this is maybe their best chance uh, to get a win. Uh, the only team, according to sidelines power ratings, that um, Mississippi Valley State will play that is worse than Alabama AM is Grambling. Unfortunately for Mississippi Valley, that game is on the road. Mm. And, 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 and Pine, Pine Bluff's right in that same ballpark, too, at least. Yeah, Pine Bluff's bad. Um, the other team that I will tell you is, is not great, uh, and we'll, we'll talk about in the uh, extended cut of the mm. show, uh, is Texas Southern, which they mm. do get Texas Southern at home later in the season. They get two cracks mm. at Texas Southern. So, uh, yes, I think this will be uh, one of their best opportunities. Going back to something that I have already hit on, it is just very difficult to win on the road in, in conference. And so Mississippi Valley State has that going for them. Uh, at least the game is being played in their building. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Last game that they played, they played at home. Uh, they only lost to Alabama State by three points. They covered in that game. Yeah. Alabama State, let me tell you, uh, I mean, by – It's actually half decent. Yes, they are r- ranked number 283, according to Sideline, which mm-hmm. sounds very bad. It is not great. Um, but compared to these two teams uh, that are rated 343 and 362 uh, dead last, that is uh, actually pretty good. So I agree with you. If Mississippi Valley State doesn't cover this game, like they, I, I don't know if they have a better setup to cover a game for the rest of the season. And so if, if they don't cover this one, who, who boy, um, things are going to be looking down, 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 down. So I can't believe I'm saying this, but I actually love Mississippi Valley state. Uh, and they, yeah. And, and they are five and nine against the spread this season. So they've actually covered five times and only three of those were when they were getting <laughs> 40 or more points. I can't believe I'm saying that because wow, it's wow. just hilarious. Um, but I mean, they took Pacific to overtime and obviously Pacific is not a good basketball team, but they were getting mm-hmm. 20 points there and they yeah. took them to overtime on the road. And, and as we mentioned, all the games that they've played, they've, they've, um, accepted money from bigger schools and obviously I'll play do the same thing. So they've played all road games. Um, and so they, they, they've traveled on the road and, and I think that battle tells them and helps them out. I'm not sure they're going to win a single game in conference, but you saw it in the last game, the home game to Alabama state where they hung in there yeah. ground at the game and, and playing Alabama state as much as we say like Alabama state's decent for the swag because they are, 
they still might be other than like Pacific. They're probably the best team that they've played. I mean, the worst team they've played all season because mm-hmm. the rest of the teams is San Francisco, Baylor, Gonzaga, yeah. Liberty, North Texas, yeah. um, Cal state Northridge, who's made a massive turnaround and been fantastic. These are TCU, Yukon, Oklahoma, LSU. I mean, that's like kind of a murderer's row right there of yep. they've played really good teams and they've got the doors blown off of them and they aren't a good basketball team, but right. that doesn't mean that they can't cover a really big number. And this is one where the road team should be favored by four or five. Yep. Um, but, but eight and a half, nine is, is a little bit too much. Again, on average, we're not trying to say it's a lock. We're just saying on average, you think they can hang around late fouls could cost them in this one. Cause in general, I want to wrap up with something you mentioned, which is it's hard to win on college in college basketball on the road. And because it's hard, a lot of times teams, they're just trying to get out of Dodge with the victory. And Alabama yep. A&M would be very happy with a one-point win because yep. it's not easy to win on the road. And so, yep. obviously, if they get fouled late, they're going to make the free throws. And they make the free throws, you know, they might win by 10. But in general, um, they're not going to be dying to, to blow them out because they're just going to yep. be, how do we get a win? And there's a possibility uh, because that maybe they don't go quite as fast as they're used to going. And that could also help keep it a slower game. Again, Miss Valley State really wants to grind this game down to a pulp. Um, yeah. I think they can hang around. Big number here. It's Mississippi Valley State or pass. I think we're going to grab the eight and a half. A great pick, which will take us to the finale. The aforementioned Alabama State and Arkansas Pine Bluff. Because this one's pretty fascinating to me. Uh, Alabama State just got through playing that game against Mississippi Valley State, where there was a total of 105 points in it. Mm-hmm. And Alabama State isn't actually that slow of a team, but their offense isn't very good. Yeah. And their defense is pretty solid. And Arkansas Pine Bluff is in a similar boat, except for everything opposite of that, <laughs> because they play fast yeah. and their defense is dead last in college basketball. The yeah. worst defense. But as much as, well, first off, Alabama State's been a, mostly an under team this year. Arkansas Pine Bluff, as much as they've been an over team, did not get anywhere near over in their first conference game. And you wonder if that pace is going to slow down just a little bit, if that defense will be a little bit less exposed going against weaker offenses. I'm wondering if Arkansas Pine Bluff games are going to be a little bit more normal going forward. That doesn't mean they're going to be low scoring. Right. Because pace in that defense, it can't not be. But... I just think there's a little bit of inflation here as Arkansas Pine Bluff enters conference. And I'm wondering if the time is running out to capture that. We're going to go under 151 and a half B grade pick, not quite as valuable uh, with regards to how much of an edge we have. But again, I'm thinking there's a chance that Arkansas Pine Bluff in conference here is a little bit less just recklessly fast as they were in non-conference and non-conference are playing a bunch of teams better than them that wanted to get down the court with them. And they were happy to do that. It was all fun and games. And now that we're in conference, it might slow down just a hair. And all that's all that's needed is just a hair to keep us under this. This is a really high number for yeah. a SWAC game. Folks, if you if you have a minute, go back and look at the SWAC scores from Saturday. They're all pretty low scoring. Yeah. <laughs> and so that's what we're constantly talking about with bad teams. Defense wins out because you can always add effort and make your defense better. You can't add effort and make the offense better if the talent's not there. And that's kind of what we're dealing with here. Under 151 and a half, be great pick. Cousin Jared, tell us more. So, I mean, definitely you could uh, counteract everything I'm about to say with Pine Bluff has the worst defense in college basketball. Um, mm-hmm. So, like, I acknowledge that that is a rebuttal to everything I'm about to say. But you mentioned that a lot of these swipe games have been really low scoring. Alabama State – they have played more than a few up-tempo teams this season, and it hasn't necessarily translated to points um, for them. Uh, so th- they played USC, only got the 59. They played LSU, who has had issues on defense at points this season, only got the 56. Uh, they scored 62 at Auburn, which is respectable. Uh, mm-hmm. But, you know, Auburn likes to get up and down the court. You would have thought maybe they could get a little bit more there. So, uh, and then, of course, you talked about that that last game, Mississippi Valley State, where they only got 51 points. Um like I said, in general, SWAT games seem to be more low scoring. And I just can't get past the fact that Alabama State has faced teams that played at this pace previously this season, and it hasn't necessarily mattered. Now, again, none of them had a defense as bad as Pine, Pine Bluff. But it just seems like Alabama State is just maybe a little more immune to the pace because their offense is, is so bad. And, and I think I just cannot get the fact that this team has gone under in exactly one game this season 
mm. out of my head. And that one game for Pine Bluff was Saturday against Alabama AM, mm. a game that had a total of 167 mm. and had 125 points in it. Yeah. yeah I mean, I, and again, I'm not saying you're going to see the same thing here, but yeah. I'm just wondering if there's, we talk about it a lot with conference, it gets a little bit measured, mm-hmm. a little bit slower pace, a little bit less crazy, a little bit less, you know. Especially I, at the end of games when, you know, everybody's wanting to get in just the right play and, and run just the right thing to attack the specific defense. Yeah. And, and there's a lot of, and we, we kind of saw it today in the Minnesota game where, you know, we backed Minnesota as our play of the day, you know, at, at short odds. And, uh, you know, they got they got up five with like four minutes to go. And they're basically like killing the first 25 seconds of the shot clock before taking a terrible shot. I'm like, mm-hmm. guys, you're only up five points with four minutes to go. Right. Like, why are we? But that that's a thing, right? And so it's like if some team gets up six points, they're just like, oh, we've got to take the entire 30 seconds, right? And, and yep. you don't see that in non-conference. In non-conference, you just play. It seems yep. like, and uh, other than certain matchups, right? But, um, and so uh, this game could go flying over because any game with Pine Bluff can go flying over. They've put up triple digits multiple times this year, but, um, and they've given up triple digits multiple times this year. It's just, it's a different world because the games they've scored triple digits on don't have defenses like Alabama State. It's been Division yep. two schools, Division three schools. Yep. And with the games that they've been giving up triple digit points to, it's against teams that have much better offenses than Alabama State. So, yeah. I, I, I think there's a better chance than not we go into this under 151 in a half B grade pick. There's your recap, Cousin Jared. Parting words before we take a 60 second break so that people can have some educational reading to some nice tunes. And then we come back for our Dub Club exclusive review of every single Monday college basketball game. I mean, we're giving up Mississippi Valley State as a play of the day. You you, you can't say that we don't dig deep. I mean, we we do we do our research here for for you good viewers. I I kind of have, and I didn't copy in the the free show recap the last pick. That's that's my bad. That's that, Iowa State was from Saturday. It was our one loss Saturday. So um, obviously the the last picks when we just covered. Um, thankfully, uh, for us on Saturday, we did get uh, Kentucky at plus odds uh, as mm-hmm. a great pick. Yep, that was then, nice. Uh, so that was nice to counteract the, the, the Iowa State loss. Um, I, I, I am hoping this is like one of the most viewed episodes of the season just because how many people are out there making videos about this slate of games. And so I, I have to assume we're going to get a lot of eyeballs today because of yeah. this. So uh, again, hopefully these three picks work. But as we're always saying, the confidence doesn't come in one individual game. In one individual game, anything can happen. The confidence comes in the totality of picks. And that's why we encourage you to sign up on Dub Club, that free trial two-week trial if you sign up here before any of these games tip off on monday via the link and the show description you just go to the homepage for dump a little bit there's no special link it's just i'm helping you get there easier uh, and that way you can kind of see the totality of the picks over the whole week and uh check out what we have to offer and that's where we have confidence in the long run uh otherwise though after we've dug deep for this we're going to dive even deeper after the 60 second musical interlude hopefully we see you on the other side of the break and again if you want to hear the rest of the show you got to be with us on dub club that sign up link in the show description otherwise we will see you tomorrow